Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. And before we get into it with our guest here today, I'd like to remind everyone that if you enjoy this content, to please give a like and subscribe down below. I'd greatly appreciate it. We have Julia Dello on the podcast. She's coming to us all the way from Massachusetts, where I hope the weather's a little bit better than it is here in Minnesota. But, you know, we are, we're like in the same zone, so so who knows where it's at. She's also 21, so everyone's like, yeah, she looks like that. You go on her Instagram page, and she's 21. She probably has some secrets that I hope that she's willing to share with us. But most importantly, she's our current guest. Julia, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me on. And I'm an open book when it comes to, like, training and nutrition. So there are there are no big secrets from me, but... I have been watching a few of your podcasts before, and I know that you ask about the weather a lot. So I have the weather <laughs> pulled open. So it's a high of 34 today and a low of 20. So that's that's what it's like in Massachusetts right now. She knows me. That's always the first question that I got to go by because, <laughs> you know, I, I like to start this. I either start this podcast off really depressed or I start it off really happy. So, you know, either way, that's how it goes. But you got that all the way good. So, you, hey, I can tell that this is going to be a good podcast, just getting just getting it started. But why don't you give us your backstory, first of all, and what really inspired and motivated you to get in shape and how that led to where you're at right now? Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess my primary, like, fitness passion, I, I guess I could say, is bodybuilding. But I didn't actually start bodybuilding until not too long ago. I've only been doing it now, I want to say, like, about three-ish years. But... <laughs> A lot of people get surprised by that, but I had done sports growing up. So as soon as I was able to walk, really, my parents had us, uh, I have three siblings. They kind of, they forced us all to go on the swim team. So I have been <laughs> swimming for a long time. I never really enjoyed it. I never really enjoyed team sports. And then, so after I did swimming up until probably, I want to say middle school is about when I stopped swimming and then I kind of got more into volleyball and volleyball was kind of then the sport I did. And it wasn't, again, something I enjoyed that much. It was just, it was what I did. So I just, I did it. I wasn't terrible at it. And so I just kept with it. And so I did school volleyball, club volleyball, uh, all the way through high school. Uh, my freshman year of college, I actually did, um, division three volleyball, but I actually stopped doing that because I, that's kind of around when I got into bodybuilding and I was like, I want to, I want to stick with bodybuilding. I, I just, I didn't really have a passion for volleyball and bodybuilding was the first sport that I actually was like, I enjoy this. I, I want to do this. I look forward to the workouts. I look forward to what it does for me. And so when I was doing volleyball my freshman year, we would have practice. And then after practice, I would go into the college rec center and just try and lift some weights. And <laughs> I did that for a while. And then I was like, if I want to actually focus more on bodybuilding, I need to just do that. So that's when I decided to stop doing bodybuilding and or stop, <laughs> not stop doing bodybuilding, but stop doing uh, volleyball and really focus on bodybuilding. And I didn't really have anyone showing me the way or anything like that. Um, right when I started, I did have like an online coach, I want to say for about like a month, but it was just one of those like cookie cutter, not really listening to what I had to say. And I was like, this isn't right. This is making me hate lifting. So then for the next two, three years, I just dove deep into just online research and figuring out things for myself. So for a, the longest time, I'd just been writing my own routines um, in, in the gym and doing my own nutrition. And that's where I saw the most results. So that's kind of like my sport background. And that's awesome. And what about the sport of bodybuilding really appealed to you mostly because it's a very niche culture and very niche group of people where, I mean, it's not that, it's not that popular, especially for 18 year old girls to really be like, Hey, <laughs> I want to become a bodybuilder. So what about that right. really appealed to you? So, I mean, what I liked about bodybuilding the most was, I mean, when I was growing up, I was very like insecure about my body and things like that. And I had always wanted to have kind of like that muscular, muscular look and look like an athlete. And I always considered myself an athlete because I had done all those sports, but I was like, why don't I look like the girls that I'm seeing who are like very, very muscular, who are competitive professional athletes and all that? Like, I think I work out like, wh why can't I look like that? And so I was always very, very insecure. And what appealed to me about bodybuilding was I was like, wait, hold on, this is going to give me the physique that I've been looking for. Like, I had always, uh, there was like, 
for a while, I kind of got into the CrossFit side of things because I saw the CrossFit bodies and I was like, yeah, like that, that looks great. Like I want to look like a CrossFit person. We're both too tall for CrossFit. Let's be honest. We're both too tall. (laughs) I did not enjoy CrossFit. Um, didn't stick with that long because I just wasn't having fun with it. And I also wasn't seeing the results that I wanted to see because that's, that's like a performance sport bodybuilding. What I love about that is you are changing the way that your body looks like that is the goal. Yes, you're going to get stronger, but that's not when you're up on stage posing, nobody cares what you bench press. They care like what your chest looks like. They care about like, they don't care about your squat. They just care about your quad development, your glutes, your hamstrings, all that kind of stuff. And so I really like that. So it helped my confidence immensely and it actually helped me look the way I want to look. What was your friends and family's reaction like when you announced them like, oh, hey, I'm going to be going to the gym a lot more often and, you know, you might see some changes from me. (laughs) (laughs) So um, I definitely am a little crazy with numbers and things like that. And I remember my freshman year um, in college, I would bring a food scale into the dining hall. I didn't care. I was like, you know. At, the, at that point, I didn't look muscular um, at the time. But the thing is with bodybuilding and what makes it difficult to start is what you do in the very beginning is still what you do at the very end in a sense. So if you're doing everything perfectly, but you just haven't been doing it long enough, it doesn't matter. You just have to stick with it long enough. So people will look at you like you're crazy. Like when I was bringing my food scale in, like I definitely got some weird looks. But then as the years went by, people start coming up to you and they're like, hey, like, how did you actually get this body? Like, can you help me start putting on muscle? So the people that kind of like look at you like you're crazy are the ones that turn around and then ask for help further down. Absolutely. I love talking genetics on this podcast because, you know, everyone's different. And especially, I mean, yeah, she's probably heard me ask this question before just because everyone's body's built differently. And, you know, everyone always has that one body part that really, really takes off when they get started working out. And then everyone has that one body part that just drags behind. What were those body parts for you when you were getting started? So I I would say that a strong point for me has always been my back. And then more recently, I've seen my shoulders just kind of like blow up. And I can attribute the shoulders to just getting better at doing um, exercises, like really just working on the mind-muscle connection and feeling when I'm actually hitting like the lateral head of my delt. Um, But body parts that kind of lag behind for me, I think definitely I have to work really hard to bring my legs up. And I think I also just don't have, (laughs) in terms of ab genetics, I have like pretty symmetrical abs, but they don't like, I have to get really lean for them to show it all. I don't have kind of like the protruding blocky abs that some people have. So that's definitely some areas that I struggle with. Hey, at least we got another person that struggles with legs. Every time I hear that, I was like, okay, there's a there's one more person out yes. there in the world that I can that I can be with. But yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, that swimmer's back too. That's that's probably what what got you that because I used to date a girl who's a swimmer, and yeah, just even giving her a hug, it's like trying to hug a tree basically, where you're just just like <laughs> reaching around and you're yeah. But no, so that's that that's great. I mean, and that you had that background too in those sports because I find that with so many people that do this, just having that extra background in sports really does help you because when it comes to like if I were to tally all the guests that we've had on in their stories i mean it's like half and half half you know have never lifted a weight in their life then half have that that background in sports but i mean nutrition is so important when it comes to this lifestyle and it's not talked about nearly as much as it should be what were some of the bigger nutritional changes that you made because like you said you were that you know ocd person with the scale basically (laughs) weighing your food which is which obviously i mean it's it's paid off and you know more people i think really should if they really want to get into this lifestyle but what were some of the bigger changes that you made nutrition wise So I've always like before I even got into lifting weights, nutrition was was always something that I kind of paid attention to because I had always wanted to like have a better body than I had had at the time. And I was very insecure about it. The first thing you jump into were like how to diet, how to lose weight, how to do all this, do all these things. And so I had been like dieting and crash dieting since since I was like 14 years old. So that's when I actually started looking into nutrition and things like that. So that was before I even touched a, a weight really on my own. I already had a little bit of a familiarity with like calories, macros and things like that. Um yeah, cuz that I'm trying to think it's it's honestly like you will not see the results that you want to see unless you are on point with your nutrition. And so I had been yeah tracking calories since I was 14 to 15. So when I actually started getting into looking into bodybuilding, 
it, I was familiar with it. So I didn't have to make like that many changes, if that makes sense. I um, definitely started really learning about my body and knowing about what foods worked for me and what didn't, what made me feel good and what I just wanted to eat. Because one of the most important things I think you can do is to find a sustainable diet that works for you. Because if it's not sustainable, you will stop and you will fall off. And that's the problem I think a lot of people have with their food is they think, oh, in their head, I'm a bodybuilder. That means I must eat egg whites and spinach and do that every single morning and things like that. And I see that and it makes me so sad because I think that you should enjoy every single meal that you eat. And I'm a very, very big proponent of that. But you start to enjoy the stereotypical like healthier foods, I think, the more you work out. Because if you have a fitness goal in mind and you're really pushing your body to the edge, you can feel how certain foods make you feel. So I don't even necessarily like, yeah, super sugary and greasy foods in the moment, they're going to taste good, but I don't really crave them as much anymore because I know just how negatively they affect my workouts. I don't know. Every, every once in a while when I go to Dairy Queen and I get a cookie dough blizzard, you know, that that that's one of those things where I was like, hey, I'm just going to enjoy it while, while it's, in, but it's, it's always <laughs> good to have that moderation too. But what foods do you find work best for your body? Because one of the reasons why I love to bring up this nutrition thing is because it, just like with working out, you're not going to see the same results if you follow the same nutrition plan as someone else because everyone's body's built right. differently. I actually, I can, I am a little crazy with numbers. So I do have, I follow a meal plan like loosely throughout the day, but I make a lot of substitutions. Um, and I think the most important thing is calories because that's going to dictate whether you lose weight or not is it's always calories in versus calories out. Um, but I mean, foods that I love to eat, like I love eggs and then I have a ton of whole eggs, but then I'll also mix in egg whites with those to, um, increase the volume of the food. Um, I actually eat a lot of deli meat that I feel like people wouldn't instantly assume that that's a lot of people like like to demonize foods. So they'd be like, you eat deli meat. That's that's unhealthy. But it's like I, I, it tastes good. I like it. So I, I chop up like ham and throw that in my eggs. And I love oatmeal. I eat a ton of oatmeal. I put in. Um, I don't necessarily drink a lot of protein shakes. I don't really view protein powder as a supplement. I view it as a food because that's what I think it is. Um, but I'll add that to oatmeal, make it taste good. Um, I used to just eat oatmeal raw and it was the worst thing ever. I, I went a couple of months just doing that. And I, I'm one of those weird people where like, oh yeah, I'll have ramen noodles raw, just, just nothing else in them and stuff. Yeah, I just, just did basically just get carbs or just get something in. But yeah, that's the moment you said oatmeal. I was like, oh, I almost want to throw up. Cause I was like, oh, God, <laughs> that just brings back bad I love memories. it. Oh I no, I, I love it too now with flavor and stuff like that. But I just remember all those times that I was eating it raw where I was oh, just like, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, I couldn't do that. I think, yeah, if you hate oatmeal, then don't eat oatmeal. It's all these things that just find what works for you. And I can quickly name some more stuff that I eat. Like I love couscous, pasta. I eat so many vegetables during the day. I probably eat at least two to three pounds of vegetables a day. Um, and that's, I have to do that because I have a very, very high appetite. So I need to find foods that are high volume, but low in calories just so I'm full throughout the day. And then I, right now, the meat that I eat the most, I do eat a lot of ground beef. Um, when I first started lifting, though, uh, my nutrition has definitely gotten better over time. But I remember my first year of lifting, I would go through like six pounds of chicken a week. And I, <laughs> I just I ate so much meat and I wasn't eating enough of the vegetables. And so that's kind of where I was making a mistake is I'm I was still very, very hungry. And so over time, I've realized that I don't need that much meat. I actually need a lot less meat than that. I just need a lot more vegetables because that's truly the only way that I think you can sustain leanness is you need a sustainable diet and a, like a diet like that, that is going to be somewhat lower calorie to make you lean needs to have a lot of vegetables. Yeah. And I mean, the one bad thing that you're going to get from this lifestyle is that, you know, your food bill is going to be the most expensive thing probably that you have. Just that's just a warning out there to everyone <laughs> following this. It's like, yeah, you're going to have to spend some, you're going to have to spend some money on food, but yeah, it's, it's yeah. That nutrition thing. I mean, that's a podcast in and of itself. We're just talking about that because I mean, that is where you're going to see the vast result of changes and you know, you can like you, like I've said with every guest, I mean, you can be the most disciplined person ever when it comes to working out, but if you don't have a proper diet that you follow, you're only going to see a certain amount of change. You'll see a little bit, but you won't see nearly as much as what you want to see, which, you know, right. 
if you're a person like me, that's one thing that you sacrifice where you're like, I know I could look even better than I look, but you know, hey, I got to have my hamburgers and I got to have my beer. Like I told her before, it's like, a, it's sorry, it's a curse. Maybe one of these days I'll finally just be like, okay, you know what? There's, I, I looking, looking even a little bit better is going to be better than just having the beer. But you know, hey, I haven't found, I haven't found a beer that I, that I have like literally drank and said, you know, like, hey, I want to work out even more now just to even so I can cut all this out. But <laughs> no, but yeah, that's, that, that's a struggle for people like me, but especially when you're getting into this bodybuilding journey, I mean, at what point did you think that you ever wanted to compete or is there a curtain date that you have set in mind? So as of right now, I've never actually competed. Um, it's something that I, I, I've looked into and I think would be awesome. But for me, like, I like bodybuilding so much because I like the lifestyle. I could go my whole life and never compete and I would be completely fine. And I think that that's the way that you have to go into competing because there are a lot of people that go into competition. I've had plenty of them on the podcast. <laughs> and that that is how you kind of crash and burn. Because if you're someone who has no fitness background, you don't understand how to gain muscle, the food behind that, and then you go into a prep and then odds are you're going to hire a coach. And unfortunately, there are a lot of coaches out there that look like they know what they're doing, but they really don't. They're going to put you on a starvation diet. You're going to then hate your life, probably develop an eating disorder, and then swear off fitness for the rest of your life. That is that is something that can happen. So, Good old I, bodybuilding way, everyone. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, for me, if I, 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 do, I would like to try and do a show. I'm thinking the earliest I would do it would be maybe this summer. I think it would be amazing to try and like get a natural pro card in one go. Like that'd be great. <laughs> um, but I mean, if I wait, I wait, it doesn't bother me because I will be lifting whether or not there are competitions. And I think that that's truly how you should view bodybuilding and how you should be as a competitor. Oh, 100%. I mean, so many people get into this sport for the wrong reasons. And the moment they share their story with me, I was like, Oh, <laughs> I want to know how I want to I want like I've had guests on too where like I talked to them after their first show and then you know two years later yeah they haven't they, they've gone back to you know even their old self and I could call it you know just from talking to them I was like yeah you, you don't seem like you're gonna last so it's yeah when you have that mindset that you have I mean yeah there's no there's no limit and plus it's like I'm gonna be completely honest and this might lose me a couple of viewers or whatever but <laughs> I mean, that's overrated it really is kind of, I mean, it's like, yeah, you go on stage and you pose in a bikini, you're wasting money really because you're not going to, you don't make money doing it. I'm not, I don't mean you waste money for the opportunity. I mean, like you're not going to earn money competing. You're, end up, you're right. ending up spending more money than you're going to end up making. So yeah, but I mean, yeah, the more people that do it, the better. And but let's be honest with our, with my, just, you know, the whitest of the white skin and you're very white too. Very, I mean, we're going to need about 10 layers of spray tan to, you know, even get that yes. tan on to, to do that. So, you know, that's one, that's one of the reasons why I never did it either. Cause I was like, yeah, I'm going to have to, you know, the, the, my body was just not physically meant to be competing just, <laughs> you know, skin wise, appetite wise, all the other things. Yeah. There's, there's a certain breed of human that's, that's good for that co competition, but yeah, there's. And yeah, there's no pressure really to compete. I mean, yeah, you have your entire life to do it and you're 21 years old. I mean, good God, I'm 26 and, you know, I'll <laughs> take me in a time machine and put me back five years and, you know, pre-COVID, you know, let, yeah, and let's let, let's see how life is. But speaking of that, because, I mean, the big elephant in the room is the coronavirus and especially that you're in college. How have you been dealing with this whole thing? Because it's been one thing that's impacted our lives in more ways than we could have ever imagined. What has this whole experience, especially being in college, been like for you? Well, <clears throat> being in college has been kind of difficult because I go to I go to an engineering school. My major is mechanical engineering and we take a lot of labs. We do a lot of hands-on work and things like that. Like one of my on-campus jobs has been working in a machine shop with like milling machines and lathes and things like that. And when you kind of shut down campus and turn everything online and also remove any social aspect of college, you're leaving just the ugly stuff in a sense. You're taking away all the, all the not to say that college is just for like meeting friends and partying and things like that, but it's, it's what makes it bearable in a sense of <laughs> when you're doing all the really hard coursework. And then when you take away all of the labs, it's, are you really getting a beneficial education out of it. And then on top of that, we're still paying full price, yet we're not allowed to use the facilities. It just doesn't make sense to me. Like, <laughs> I would have just dropped out and went to community college then really. That's, <laughs> and just saved a ton of money. That's what I would have right. done if I was any, even if I was a senior, I'd be like, yeah, I'll just graduate then from whatever because 
Yeah, the moment that I heard that, like, oh, they're still having them pay full tuition just to basically sit in their rooms all day and be on the computer, I was like, they could just yes. do that at home. Like, what's the... And it, it's difficult being at home and doing everything because it, it blurs the line between what is school and what is relaxing at home. It kind of makes you do both poorly, in a sense. Uh, My ADD, it, I could never I could never do it. Like, I, to get hard. me to log in and, like, actually do stuff, I'd be like, yeah, I'd rather just sit at home and watch TV. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Or I'd rather just do... Yeah, let me find the spark notes of that or something like that. Or yeah, just, <laughs> right. just let me do that where, yeah, but no, I just can't even imagine what that has been like, but what has this all been like for you when the health and fitness <laughs> aspect? <laughs> so, um, I was in Massachusetts the whole time that we had any sort of shutdown and that was from basically early March to July. So however many months that was, which is a good amount, <laughs> Um, and so I live in just kind of like your stereotypical, like crappy little college apartment. I've got two roommates. Um, and I don't have like, I didn't have any workout equipment or anything like that. And I was very, very passionate about, I am very, very passionate about working out and trying to like, if I can be bettering myself, I want to, if I can be doing something beneficial to bodybuilding, I want to be doing it. And that involves lifting a lot. So the day that we got notified that there was going to be a shutdown and the gyms were shutting down. I immediately went on Facebook marketplace, um, looked up, I was able to get, um, just a small set of adjustable dumbbells that held me over for a while. I was actually working out with a cinder block and a stick for a long time. <laughs> I can, I can send you some pictures of that. That was fun. Cause I had, um, when I moved into my apartment, there was, um, in my closet, there was like a big wooden rod that I would hang all my clothes on. And probably the first week or so it snapped in half. So I had just this like wooden rod cause I, I fixed the closet later, but I had to buy a new rod. So I had just a wooden rod sitting around and then I found a cinder block outside. So I was able to get the wooden rod and like stick it through the, the hole. And so with that, I could do like curls or rows or <laughs> squat with it. And then she's so an engineer for I, I sure, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got even something more engineer related after that. Um, I kept like scouring the marketplace, but everyone was buying everything. It was impossible to find anything. Everything was sold out online. Um, so I tried to I really wanted like a barbell. And so because <laughs> because I'm in engineering school, I do know about some engineering websites and places that you buy stock material, all your hardware and things like that. So I went online, I ordered a one inch steel rod and <laughs> some um, collars that you need like a hex key to take on and off. Actually, I got it somewhere over. I'll, I'll send you pictures of all this stuff because it's kind of funny. So I ended up actually building my own barbell. And so it was a one inch um, diameter. So they do sell plates that are one inch holes. They're standard, they're called standard plates. And so it's more of like the vintage plates. So I was able to buy some old vintage tools online. So some like old York plates, um, I think like Milo barbell, things like that. So I managed to get like a bunch of really like super rusty. I had to take vinegar and clean them off. But so I had like a makeshift barbell <laughs> with some weights that I started using. And then the last addition to my quarantine um, training facility, which was my living room, um, I was able to find a really, really old workout bench that was just covered in duct tape, but it was better than nothing. So that's kind of how I made it through. And oh yeah, for <laughs> it's extremely hard to train legs when you don't have access to a lot of weights. So what I did was I would load up my adjustable dumbbells with as much weight as I could. And I'd also put a backpack on my back, fill that with the plates and walk up and down my stairs. <laughs> yeah. That's about as good as I could ever see uh, someone getting with legs in that. I mean, we've been shut down again from November until now. And I think it's like February, we're going to be back up. So also, I mean, just the whole mental side of this, how have you been dealing with all this whole pandemic mentally? Because so many people just talk about, you know, Oh, it's just been so, but they don't talk about how it's impacted people mentally. And I think that this is something that's going to have, you know, effects on people for, years to come. Oh, for sure. And I think, I mean, so many people use the gym as a mental escape almost. Like I, for me, like I love working out because it makes me happy. When you take away my gym, you're taking away a part of my life that I, I get a lot of enjoyment from. So they say like, oh, like 
we're going to shut down the gyms, tr try to prevent the spread, try to save lives. But by shutting down the gyms, like you're some people, I know it's kind of like morbid to say, but like, I'm sure there've been so many people killing themselves out of just all these little things that have added up. Like you take away their job, their gym, all this stuff, and they become very depressed. You take away any sort of like social outlet in a sense. Yeah. You might be slowing down some sort of spread, but are you really still saving lives? I don't know. That's kind of controversial. Oh, but I, I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. Yeah, I mean, and especially since we're in that age demographic where, I mean, like, we literally, there could be a million of us in a room and there might be one person that dies from it at, at our age, really, where it's, you know, obviously yeah, with the old people, it's like, yeah, keep them out of the gym. First of all, keep a lot of old people out of the gym, okay? They they they, they aren't the best <laughs> when it comes to etiquette, okay? So, you know, just, yeah, just... Build it's them their true. own, yeah. build them their own gyms, but no, expect the older ladies tend to be better than the older men. The older men really just don't give a crap about anything really anymore. So they'll do whatever they want, but yeah, that's no. So yeah, no, just even thinking about that brought back some stories in my head of like when I was young and having, having like older people in the gym, but that's, that's again, that's another whole different podcast for a whole different time because I have plenty, plenty of those stories, but yeah. <laughs> a myth and stereotype that I also love to bust in this podcast. And we talked about it and, you know, I love to bust this every single podcast is, you know, it's got gotten better the last five years due to instagram but there are still so many women that have that fear that they walk into the gym and they see one dumbbell they're going to put on 50 pounds of weight and you know first of all if i had that type of self-confidence i would be the ceo of a fortune 500 company by now so but un unfortunately i don't but i know that you didn't have that fear when you're getting started because you were one of those rare girls that were just like i just want to pack on size and stuff like that i mean obviously i bet you still probably hear that all the time how do you like to respond to that that myth because i i bet you know if you would have a nickel for every time you heard that you'd be living in a mansion right now and probably wouldn't be in college. Um, I don't, as far as like girls being afraid of almost like blowing up and getting too muscular, I feel like I don't have actually a whole lot of people voicing that to me in a sense. I do know a lot of people that are scared to go to the gym, not because they're going to get big, but because they're just insecure and it's something they're not familiar with. So they, they don't want to put themselves out there and they, they, they get embarrassed in a sense, because I think a lot of people don't, they don't know where to start and they don't want to look dumb. And so they don't go. And I've definitely... I I'm I wouldn't I'm not a trainer or anything like that and I don't like to really like train with other other people. I will in my own time like help you learn how to lift, not not during my workout, but <laughs> at another time and I've I've definitely helped people get into the gym for the first time just being like, "Hey, like I will go to the gym with you the first time. I will go and I will show you how to use all the weights, but then you have to start going on your own." And it gets better. Every day that you go, you're going to start learning and you're going to not you're going to learn to not care about the other people in there because no one is really looking at you. Like, I'll, I'll be honest, like if I'm in a, in a gym filled with women and not they don't really have that much muscle, I'm not going to be looking at them. But if I'm at the gym and I see a girl walk past me that's got like three times the amount of muscle that I do, I'm probably going to my head's going to turn and I'll be like, OK, like, but in a good way, like she has my respect. But that's the only time I really pay attention to people in the gym. But and I, I guess I was lucky, though, when I first started going, I was able to just kind of push past any like mental insecurity about going to a gym or anything like that, because the gym that I first started at was a real like vintage meathead kind of <laughs> everything was covered in rust um, from the outside. It looked like um, a warehouse. There was no parking lot. It was just like gravel. Um, and then you walked in and you just saw like up on the mirrors, all these old like bodybuilders and things like that. So I, that's kind of where I got started. And so you don't see too many gyms like that anymore. And they actually recently shut down, which was kind of sad, but that's where I started. And there was probably, I think I was maybe one of two girls my age that worked out there. If you can make it through a gym like that, then, you know, yeah, there's not going to be that many other gyms that are really ever going to intimidate you. But yeah, and that's, you know, that's a big part of it, too, is just, you know, busting these myths and stereotypes to go along because there are a ton of them. And I mean, people just let's be honest, some people, they'll come up with an excuse, you know, every day, basically, to, as to why they can't do something. So, you know, that's just unfortunate as it is. But also, I mean, with everything that's been going on and, you know, all this changes that we've been doing, and especially since you're about to graduate, I mean, do you have any idea of what, you know, your journey is going to look like, you know, in the future, especially being that you're not in college, you're going to be not in college. Do you have like a, 
a way that you can set things up after school because so many people that I knew in college they really struggled right after college because they didn't have that gym that they could go to every day that was on campus. They didn't have that set up or when they went home, you know, when they get their job, you know, you get a lot more, you have a lot less free time. Do you have any ideas set ahead of time on how you're going to be able to still maintain this lifestyle when you get that regular, you know, nine to five job or with engineering, I bet you probably work more than, you know, more than that. So do you have anything, you know, prepared of like how you're going to deal with that? So, I mean, as far as, where I'm going to work. I I have no idea locationally where I'm going to be. Um, when I graduate, I'm pretty open to moving to anywhere in the country, but as far as keeping that balance between like working a full-time job, keeping your fitness and all that kind of, all that kind of stuff and how I'm going to deal with that. Um, I mean, for the past two summers, I've had an internship the whole time, which is a full-time engineering job, basically. So after my freshman year of college, I realized, actually, no, during my freshman year, the the school gym was not cutting it. So I've been not working out at my school gym basically the whole time I've been here. I have, I already have an outside gym membership. Um, but I mean, for the past two summers, I've managed to work 40 hour, 40 plus hours a week, still get in my gym time, get in my meals and be perfectly fine. I mean, for me, the, I guess the short term goal is to just work as an engineer and build up some money. I think it would be amazing a few years down the line to potentially look into opening some sort of fitness place, maybe not like your standard, like commercial gym, but something small and private. That would be amazing for me. But I'm very confident that I will be able to balance the amount that I work out and with work and food and all of that, because I've done it the past two summers. I'm not going to say that it's the most easy thing to do. It's definitely not, but I make it work. And if you want something bad enough, you find a way to make it work. I remember the first time I really did with it. I was like, God, this sucks. I was like, God, I just wish I could have that college lifestyle more where I could just have all this more free yeah. time to, to work out. When, But then you're like, because that's the one time where you really have to get down to the nitty gritty and you're like, okay, I have to work out by this time. It's not like the thing where it's like, oh, I have the rest of the day to work out where I can just pick a right. time and decide what it's like. No, by like 10 a.m. You have to have gotten your workout done because you work at noon and you get off at eight o'clock then. And exactly. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's one thing. Too. Or like, it's like, yeah, I get off of work and then, or if you did like a double shift, yeah, I have like two hour break in between. So I have to get a workout in at that time. So yeah, it really, it really separates the people that really, you know, are just doing it just because they have the time for it, as opposed to the people that are doing it that, you know, just because they really, really enjoy it, which is, you know, it's, it is what it is because yeah, like I've said, I have friends that have fallen off the wagon just because obviously, yeah, they they can't structure their day as well. But two of the questions that I love to ask every guest that I have on health and fitness wise is that, you know, first of all, cardio is a trigger word for me. Don't even mention it. <laughs> I hate it more than life itself. I mean, and when I say cardio, I mean like actually like running, like I could walk on a treadmill for eight hours a day and it wouldn't, it wouldn't even bother me just because I had jobs and warehouses where I was constantly walking anyway. So it really doesn't bug me, but what does your cardio look like for you? Or do you even do any cardio? Cause I have some guests on here. They're like, I've never done cardio. And I was like, oh, you lucky, <laughs> you lucky person. Um, so when I first started lifting, I really did not do a whole lot of cardio. Um, I actually, so for the, basically the past three years, I've been doing my own training and nutrition, but I recently did actually hire a coach that I met at the gym that I work out right now. And so before that, I wasn't doing any cardio. I am doing a little bit of cardio now, but I think that when you do do cardio, it the goal shouldn't be weight loss. The goal is to, it's good for your heart. It's good for your health. You do cardio to be healthy. You don't do it because you want to lose That's what weight. I tell myself every time when I'm like, God, I hate this so much. Why am I right. doing this? Yeah. So my cardio right now, it just, I do like after my workout, I'll get on a seated bike for 15 minutes and I do that maybe four or five times a week. And that's really about it. Oh God. Yeah. She's living the good life, everyone. So <laughs> now that, now that I put on some, a little bit of COVID weight, you know, I got to definitely start, get, get back on that now. But I mean, the most important thing when it comes to this lifestyle, and I don't care what anyone says is sleep. It's more important than anything. Yeah. And for anyone that disagrees with that, I mean, pull an all nighter and then go and try to work out and tell me how that goes. You can tell by my eyes. I didn't get that much sleep last night. So I'm feeling that effect entirely. But what does your sleep schedule look like? Cause for so many people it's different where for me, I'm more of a naturally a night owl. I'll be in bed, you know, like two or three and then I'll normally get up around, excuse me. I'll normally get up around, you know, like 10 or 11. So, you know, this actually turned out perfectly with our podcast. If you would have asked me to do like an hour earlier, I was like, yeah, no, that's not, that's, <laughs> that, that's not going to happen. 
so what is your sleep schedule look and there is there anything that you do in order to get that proper amount of sleep because especially with technology i mean so many people just have that struggle with it and i struggle with it as well where sometimes i'll be mm-hmm. editing a podcast i was like holy crap it's 5 a.m i should probably get to bed now so my sleep schedule really depends on kind of how my life is structured at the moment um, when I, right now I'm not working 40 hours a week cause I'm about to start, um, my second semester of school again. So I can't do that. Um, but like when I, when I was working a lot, I would go to bed. Uh, I want to say I went to bed around 11 PM and then woke up at like six, which was like seven hours, which was not great. Um, I definitely would prefer to get a little more sleep than that. But that was just me. Like I, it, w- it wasn't that I couldn't go to bed earlier. I just was staying up a little later than I should right now. My sleep's great though, because I have the time to sleep in a little bit because all my classes, um, I don't have classes or meetings really before 10 AM. So that's good for me. So I can go to bed kind of whenever, whenever, and just make sure I'm up in time for anything. And I, I try to get around eight hours. If I get less than that consistently, I start to feel the effects because recovery is super, super important. So that's definitely a big thing. But yeah, I don't I'm trying to think. Yeah, well, I gotta say, that's one of the reasons why me and my first roommate, my first semester freshman year, didn't get along as well. And he moved after the first semesters because I told him, I was like, just to let you know, buddy, like I stay up late. Like I'm going to like, I didn't have a class scheduled before noon. And I was like, I'm going to, and I keep it that way for at least I kept it for the first two years, but it got to the point where, and I, and I obviously, I wasn't like, you know, like doing stuff that was super loud. So what I do is, you know, like after you went to bed at like 10 or 11, you know, I'd go out to the common room basically and just hang out there till like two or three in the morning and then do homework, do whatever and blah, blah, blah. But then yeah, it got to a point where he was like, yeah, I because he'd get done with class and because he'd have like an eight a.m. and then he'd get done at like ten thirty and I'd still be asleep when he'd come back when he'd come back. So then he's like, I, I don't want to be like quiet when I'm getting back from my classes just because you're still asleep. And I was like, Yeah, that's that's totally yeah. understandable. So yeah, it, it it's definitely yeah, it's it's a mixed bag. But yeah, that's sleep. I mean, I tell you, I mean, those days when you don't have it, it's just you feel oh, yeah. you feel dead. But I've I've always said too, one of the best feelings that you can ever have is that feeling when you get that proper amount of sleep and you wake up and you're like, oh my god, I feel like a superhero, basically, yes. like just just doing that. But you mentioned that you're a huge numbers person, so and I love to ask, you know, most of my guests on. So what are I bet you probably get asked all the time. So what are some of your best lifts? But being that you are a numbers person, what are some of your best lifts? Okay, yeah. So I don't actually ever test one rep maxes. Oh, okay. Because for Which is me, good. I've never done that myself personally either. Yeah, it's just not something that I really care about that much. And I think that because I'm not a power lifter, I'm not trying to chase those sorts of numbers. But I can tell you like my working set numbers and things like that. But another thing about one rep maxes is, is I'm just I think bodybuilding is all about longevity. And you need to figure out how you can not be injured. That's basically like, because if you get injured, you've kind of screwed yourself over. Um, and that's, that's why I think that I've able, I've been able to see, um, a decent amount of progress in the same amount of time that a lot of people don't see the same amount of progress is I'm very, very smart when it comes to stopping when I feel any sort of pain and switching exercises anytime I think I'm injuring myself. But to get back to your question, I love dumbbell chest press. Um, and I think my best with that so far is seven reps with um, a 65 in each hand. So yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty damn good. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I tell myself, I'm like, I'm only 21. I, I have a lot, I have a lot more time to get stronger, but that's, that's probably one of my best lifts I would say. For 20. Yeah. That that's the, yeah. That is ridiculous. Well, I got to ask, I've been, I've been holding myself out of asking this the entire podcast, but have you ever got confused for Sophie Turner or Sansa Stark from Game of Thrones? Because you look, <laughs> you look just like her. Like I was going to say that like your Instagram profile should really just be Sansa Stark with muscles basically, or something like that. <laughs> because yeah, the moment I said, that, I was like, okay, she could have been a double for her in like Game of Thrones. Like if you ever like, if you're, if you ever decide Thank that, you. if you ever decide that like engineering doesn't want to be a thing, you could just contact Sophie Turner and just be like, Hey, we look similar. If you ever need a background, if you ever need a double or anything like that, right? We'll need to go to the gym a little bit more, Sophie. But you know, hey, we can work. We can work something out. I can train you for like, yeah. But no, so yeah. I, I the moment I've that, had a few people say that to me though, yep. the Sophie Turner thing. 
Hey, you know, that's always a great, that's always great. So I did my genealogy thing and I'm related to Richard Gere. He's like a 10th cousin to me. Obviously that's where I got my looks from. No, I, I always, I always tell that joke, but it's like, yeah, I, so I don't have a celebrity that I look like. So, you know, at least, at least you, at least you have that though. But two questions that I ask before we wrap up every single podcast where, you know, if you could change one thing about the sport of bodybuilding or just the healthy and fit lifestyle in general, we can do both if you want. What would be one thing that you'd like to see change and everyone would go along with it? Um, I think the misconception that you have to feel like you're suffering when you work out, I think that you should be excited to work out. I think that you should enjoy working out. And if bodybuilding isn't your thing, don't let it be your thing. There are so many different forms of fitness that you can be interested in. But too many people think that they must be miserable in order for it to be working. And that is how you quit. Because it's easy to do things that you like, and it's easy to stop doing things that you hate. So to get rid of the idea that you have to like, suffer. I mean, yes, you need to work hard in a sense, but I'm talking about waking up and dreading every day. That is no way to live. Especially with what we've lived through this last year. But speaking on years, I mean, if we were to have talked to you a year ago today and you would have predicted a global pandemic and everything that's gone down, you know, I would have bet my entire life savings against you and, you know, I would have lost. So it goes to show how much I know. But if we were to talk to you a year from today, now, again, I don't know what the world's going to be like a year from now. We could be talking and you could see a fire behind me. You could hear gunshots behind me. Who knows where the world's going to be at a year from today. But in an ideal world, where would you like to be at when it comes to your bodybuilding, when it just comes to your overall life? What are some goals that you'd like to have achieved if we were to talk a year from today? A year from today, I would like to be, hopefully, injury-free, um, a little more muscle. Um, that's kind of, yeah, I mean... For me, it's just about still, I would hope that I still love it as much as I do do now, if not more. Um, but that's, yeah, I just want to keep cruising along and hopefully I can do that without injury because that can be very like detrimental mentally too. Is there one body part that you're looking forward to like growing the most in this next year? All of them, I guess. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, it's hard to just pick because I mean, with bodybuilding, you want symmetry and things like that because it's not always a size contest it's kind of like whose body flows the best um I mean I would love to like build my legs up crazy big because if you have like if you're if you're truly like judging people on stage and they have very similar physiques but so like one person's legs are just way better I, I think it looks a lot better so I would just yeah to bring my legs up a lot that's awesome so yeah and again you know everyone Go and check out Julia. I'll leave a link to her pod. Or I mean, I'll leave a, I'll leave a link to her Instagram page down. See, that's our one tongue-tied and twisted moment, everyone. I announced that I get I get tongue-tied and twisted at least once every time. So, hey, it happened towards the end here, which means that it was a good podcast. But everyone, go, go and give her a follow on her Instagram. I highly recommend that you go and check it out. Now, again, I will give you the warning that will inspire you to get in shape and stop eating those Twinkies and, you know, do all that. But again, Julia, thank you so much. And is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to before we wrap things up? Um, just everyone who's ever helped me along in my fitness journey, to be, to be honest, because that's what helps me keep going. Oh yeah. I mean, that's motivated. And plus that's one of the reasons why I love, still love doing this podcast. Cause I am motivated. I'm looking at her and she's like, she's 21 years old. I definitely got to go and work out after I'm done talking to her. Good God. It helps, it helps keep me sane because I have other times, especially in this Minnesota winter where, you know, it'll be like negative 20 probably in like two or three weeks. And I'll just be like, why am I even what's the point of life? Like when you just look outside and you just see things that are that cold and you have times where your car won't even start because it gets so cold and you're just like, yeah. And then I look at some of my guests I have on, I was like, okay, that's motivation to keep working out. Then it's like, <laughs> if I can, if I can, if I can just, you know, improve myself a little bit, but again, Julia, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, and again, you guys, everyone go and check her out. I highly recommend it. And this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot signing out. Have a great day, everyone.